Hello everyone and welcome to my Storm in a Light Bulb tutorial. So I'm working on an A5 piece of watercolour paper here and I have some permanent markers, a fine liner and a slightly fatter one, a pencil and an eraser. So I'll be doing the whole thing in this first and then adding watercolour inks later. So let's start off with our paper at a bit of an angle as I have here because eventually the light bulb will be slanted and I just find it a bit easier to work uh, doing the light bulb straight down and then turning the paper back the right way afterwards. So we start with a squarish shape at the top of the light bulb, a line coming down slightly curved from the left and the right and then finally rounding off with a big um, bulb shape at the bottom. Now you can see when I put my paper straight again it looks like my light bulb is resting at an angle. So once you've got the whole shape outlined in pencil, it might take a while because it's a bit of a tricky shape and you want to make sure that it is symmetrical. So do that in pencil first. Once you're done, you can go over the whole thing in black permanent marker. Now I've just made sure that the top part here looks like it has a slight diagonal line on the left and the right and then completely flat at the top. So it looks like that um, part of a light bulb where you screw into the socket. Now I'm making a bumpy line coming down on the left and on the right so it looks a bit more like a screw shape. Just joining up the bottom of both of those bumpy lines and then going to join up each one of the bumps all the way across the middle so we've created more of that screw shape. So I'm using a fine liner to just add a little bit of texture in um, the middle of this part here um, and I'm going to do a darker bit in the very center just to give it a bit more of a three-dimensional shape. So I'm going to be adding watercolors to this later, which is why my pens need to be um, not water soluble, they need to be permanent. But if you're not planning on adding watercolors, you could use any black markers at all. Um, you can also use a black biro with this, just like a black ballpoint pen. That will also work really well, even if you're adding something wet like a watercolor afterwards, because they won't melt. So I'm just erasing the pencil there, neatening up some of the lines and I'm going to add three or four maybe little bumpy kind of hills that it looks like this light bulb is resting on. It's just a simple upside down U shape, nice and wide and then I'm adding some little circles, really small circles and dots um, in these just to give a bit more texture and interest. Now the initial idea with this was that I would make this project um, an example of something that we could do just with a black marker pen or black biro um, and we would add a lot of uh, detail with texture but I did go a bit crazy at the end and add a bit of colour but you don't need to do that you could um, keep it just black and white. So I'm going to go through the centre of the light bulb now starting wide and then coming in a bit more narrow to make a giant lightning bolt that is coming all the way down the middle which looks a little bit like um, the tungsten inside of a light bulb but also gives that impression that there is a whole storm going on inside this light bulb. So first of all coming down in a zigzag line and then going back up from a point at the bottom um, not quite a parallel line, you want them going off at kind of an angle from each other, so going out wide and then coming back in thin, going out wide and then coming back in thin to give that true lightning um, zigzag shape. So I've done two lightning bolts coming out from the center of the light bulb. You could just do one or you could do as many as you think you can fit. We don't want to bring those all the way down to the bottom because we're leaving shape uh, space rather for this wave to come in at the bottom here. So I've created just a curvy kind of um, swirly line and then giving a zigzag shape at the top and just finishing off with another, uh, if you can see that there, another um, zigzag a little bit lower down so that we have a crest of the wave appearing at the top. And I've just done a bunch of these little C shapes or like the letter C or U shapes and some little dots just to give a whole bunch of texture inside that crest part of the wave. So going back to the rest of the wave, I just want to follow along that nice curvy shape with a bunch of roughly parallel lines. So I'm just doing this freehand with my marker pen, but this is a little bit um, of, a, of a perilous way to do things because if you make a mistake, obviously you can't fix it. So by all means do this in pencil first if you feel more confident 
doing it that way. So I filled up the whole thing there with lines. It doesn't matter how, how many you fit, however you think it looks best. So you can see that I'm adding a really simple little boat shape here. Um, nothing too complex. We just want a really straightforward design. So I'm just doing, it almost looks like it's, it's a boat made of paper, like an origami boat. But I've just got a little um, flat edge going along the waves and then coming up to a point on the left and the right, a little central column with a triangular sail. Now you could add a little bit more detail to yours if you feel that you can fit that in and you've got the time, but um, I like to keep mine nice and simple. So over here, I'm going to start at the top of the light bulb, adding a cloudy shape. So I'm doing that by just creating some spirals on either side of that central um, lightning bolt. So as you can see here, one spiral just gently tucks behind the other. So I lift up my pen where um, it hits another spiral or where it hits the central column there. So we don't draw right over the top of the others. Now, if you just have a little bit of it showing, you can almost just do a kind of a curve, like rainbow shape design with little concentric lines going in there. I think that's pretty much enough. We're just doing a very stylized uh, version of a cloud. Now, I'm going to create some raindrops following along these lines. I'm giving myself some diagonal um, lines for my raindrops to follow just in pencil first so I know exactly where I'm going and I won't get um, I won't get kind of uh, wonky along the way and end up with them going in the wrong direction. So I'm just following those pencil lines by making these little kind of dashes or dots. You could do more raindrop um, type shapes if you prefer. I'm adding a little hook at the top of my light bulb and then just creating these little overlapping chain shapes by doing one oval over the other. Now there are so many of these that I'm not bothering that they are overlapping. I'm not trying to make one look like it's tucking behind the other, although you could take a bit more time to do that if you wish, but I thought they look absolutely fine um, for this project, just doing them um, overlapping with one another. I don't think it shows too much. Now I'm just doing a little anchor at the bottom here. Uh, sorry, it was getting a bit cropped off. So I started with just a circle, which was hooking through the final piece of the chain, coming down with a couple of parallel lines and then curving up to the left and the right and finishing off with an arrow on the top and a little point on the bottom. So just a really straightforward, simple um, anchor design there. Now I'm adding some little tiny dots with my fine liner. I just felt like it needed a little bit of extra texture. And that is what it looks like when it's all just finished in black and white. Now I think that's a perfectly nice drawing and by all means leave it like that. You don't have to go as, as crazy as I'm about to go with the color. Um, and you could you also use this design to fill in with any materials that you may have to hand. So if you just want to color this in with pencils or marker pens, go right ahead. So what I'm actually using here is one of my favorite materials, which is watercolor inks. I have a few different brands here. I have Carrot Cake and another one, I can't remember the name, but uh, uh, Colorex, that's it, Colorex. Um, but I think all watercolor inks are pretty fantastic. And you can also use food coloring for this instead. They're basically the same kind of thing. So I've actually wet this paper first with some water on a paintbrush because I want to work wet on wet to allow this really flowy kind of blended effect. So I have started off with a couple of dark blue streaks going through and I'm purposefully using a sort of a bumpy paint stroke because I want this to look like a, a galaxy or a kind of a stormy sky. Um, if you find that your colors where you're placing them next to each other are not blending, then just clean off your brush and add a little bit of extra water where the two colors are meeting. So you can see I've got dark blue going into light blue. Where you have the join between those two colors, you can just dot a little bit of water along and it will just enable them to blend even better. Obviously, the more water you use, the more blended it's going to get. So if it gets out of hand, you can dry it off with a piece of paper towel. And I'm making sure that I'm not using anything too wet near the edges of my light bulb because I want the light bulb to remain 
nice and crisp and just black and white for the contrast. So I would advise if you're going to go ahead and make the background very colourful like I have, it's a good idea to leave that light bulb just black and white because if you have a very colourful light bulb and a very colourful background, you're not really going to appreciate either one of them. So just going back in there and adding some even darker blues to give real contrast and I've created these sort of swirly shapes which kind of reminded me of a galaxy or of a storm. I'm not even entirely sure what I was going for here but I just really liked the patterns. Um, initially it reminded me of sort of a space type scene. So what I'm actually using here um, in this little dish is a small um, dollop of just household bleach. Now if you're going to use this be super careful you don't want this getting on your skin. Um, I'm just dipping my paintbrush into the household bleach and dabbing it very carefully in some small dots and sometimes adding little small crosses um, to just create uh, little white stars I guess. I feel like they look like stars but it's, it's a bit abstract. Um, I'm not doing this over the whole thing. I'm doing this mostly on the darkest um, colours just for maximum contrast. I just really like using bleach. I love the way it lifts off the colour to reveal white underneath. So that's the way it looks when it's all finished. Um, why not try out my Sonic the Hedgehog drawing tutorial also available on YouTube or my Swishy Food Colouring Floral Painting Quick Draw. It's a really fast and easy one to try. You can also find me over at carlyart.org and don't forget to like this video and please do subscribe to my YouTube channel.